uh, amount. So let's try it. Let's try another method over here that you could use and you could pick which method which would be best for you. It might depend on, you know, what industry you're in. For example, are you in an industry where all of your sales are going to be prepayments because you sell subscription model stuff? Or do you only have some of them that are going to be prepayments like a down payment like we're talking about here on a guitar or something like that? All right, so let, let's say that we're gonna say that uh, we have, let's first pretend that someone called in and they're gonna say, hey, I want some guitars. So we'll make an estimate. They're calling in and they're like, I wanna buy some guitars. And let's, we'll say, we'll, we'll tell you how much it costs. So let's say it's string music and we're just gonna make an estimate to see what, see what they're talking about. And we'll put it on 227, let's say, and so if I tap through this, I'm going to say, okay, let's say that they want an EPSP, an Epiphone Standard Pro. And we're going to say, okay, and they just want one of those. So I'm going to say, all right, we got one of those here on the estimate. That would be uh, the 600. And then if I, I could apply the sales tax, I'm going to do the generic thing with the sales tax and just take the 5% for our example problem. So we could tell them, okay, it would be 630. And then we could say, okay, whatever our policy is, we want to get some portion of that down as a down payment so that we can hold on to the guitar for you because like that's a super popular guitar, especially that plaid one that you want. And that one, I, I had someone come in just like five seconds ago wanting that. So if you want me to hold on to that, then you're going to have to give me like a down payment. And I can use this to kind of calculate the down payment so then we could say okay let's save that let's save it and close it and then the question is well how am i going to collect the down payment i could last time we used the uh, receive payment form that wasn't that's usually the second step after the invoice this time we're going to use a sales receipt which is kind of an unnatural form to use because we're not actually completing the sale here we're we're recording a deposit money that we're getting before we did the work so it's it's a little bit wonky to use it but but it still it still makes sense because we're getting money from the customer okay so then i'm going to type in here string music string music for the customer and i'm going to go down and everything looks good the payment i'll just do the cash again it's going to go into the payments to deposit instead of directly into the checking account which is our standard practice thus far and then the key is down here i'm not going to put the actual guitar that they are purchasing but instead, I'm going to I'm going to basically make a new item to record the, the down payment or the deposit that they're going to make. So I'm going to hit the drop down. I'm going to add an item and it's not going to be an inventory item. Possibly I could use a non inventory. I'm just going to call it like a service item, though. And then I'm going to call it a customer deposit. Customer deposit no SKU, no category. I'll put that in the description. I'm not going to put the actual sales price because I want to populate that in the sales receipt myself. It's not going to go to a service income though, because it's not income. That's the point. I want to put it into a liability account of unearned revenue or customer deposit or whatever we want to call it. That's the point. So I have to create a new account because we don't have one of those set up here yet. So I'll just add a new account as we go new account it's going to be an other current liability account and deferred revenue i will keep it there i'm going to call it unearned revenue that's what that's like the textbook typical uh calculation but you might call it customer deposit or something whatever makes sense to you the key is it's going to be a liability account so we'll say save it and there shouldn't be any tax on it so i'm not going to make it a taxable thing here non-taxable and there it is so now i could say save it close it and then there's our customer deposit and i could put in the rate and let's just say it's a hundred dollars i'm just going to say a hundred dollars and that's how much we're going to we're going to receive and that would be based on the estimate that we made i'm just going to make up the hundred dollars for our practice problem purposes no sales tax applied to it so the sales receipt looks like a sales kind of document uh that's what the form is usually a sales form but we use the form 
to drive it to unearned revenue. We're receiving money from the customer, which is like a sale kind of thing, but we didn't actually provide the goods or services yet, which is usually when you use the sales receipt form when the goods and services are provided. What's this gonna do? Well, it's gonna increase the payments to be deposited. That's what the sales receipt form does. And the other side is gonna be driven by the item but the item is not driving it to an income account like it normally does, but instead a liability account, unearned revenue. So now we're gonna say save it and close it. 